Yo, 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 J Talk, Josh and Johnny Boy coming at you with another podcast. What's going on, people? How we doing? Hey, before we start this podcast, you know, let's talk about how we've been putting in work regardless of the circumstances that have been happening. You know, they they closed down the gyms, they opened up the gyms. They close back down the gyms and they expect us just to sit here and not get to these gains, get to these results. You know, here at Fitness Forward, doesn't matter what the obstacle is, we're always going to push through. They close the gyms. Hey, we got the Zoom workouts, six days a week, seventh day run club. Oh, they open up the gyms, but you can't, you know, they open up the gym, but you can't even be inside. You got to work out outside. You know what? We're going to work out outside, get our workouts out there. Doesn't matter what the opposition is. We're always going to rise above it. Fitness Forward members. Keep hustling, keep doing your thing. That's right. Get this thing started. That's right. I love that. You know, that's so true. Fitness Forum members, I can't tell you how many people text me and they're like, you know, this is what we've been training for. Yeah. You always say we're not always going to have the gym. And this is one way of not having a gym, being quarantined, mm-hmm. having to work out in your own house, having to mm-hmm. figure out how to use dumbbells and free weights and right. water bottles as weights. You know, still getting your gains and everybody's still losing weight and looking great. Uh, that's what it's right. about. And, it, and the thing that's awesome is you're applying all the things that you've been learning for the, for these years. You know, you, you're applying all the different things that we taught you in the gym. I've seen yeah. so many people who maybe aren't doing the Zoom workouts or coming to class, but then you see them post the workout that they did. And, I'm, and I look at the workout, I'm like, damn, that's a tough workout. That's a good setup. Like they put it together right. themselves. Not 100%. a lot of people can do that. Right. A lot of people don't have that discipline. They haven't learned that discipline through. Mm-hmm. And that's, coaching. That, and that's exactly what we're going to dive in today is pretty much the topic of discipline when it comes to starting a diet, right? Eating cleaner, different steps you can take to, you know, get to that point where maybe at one point, all you ate was fast food. You've never prepped a meal in your entire life, right? You've never, you don't know what, a, you don't know how to count your calories or your macros. You've never kept a food log. How do you go from th- that point into doing all those things so you can live a healthier balanced lifestyle right today we're talking about the the troubles with losing weight Mm because everybody wants to lose weight at some point in their life for the most part like 90 percent of people in the united states got issues (laughs) so losing losing that body losing that body fat that's like that's a good goal to have you know losing body fat that's why everyone wants to lose body fat because Right. You know, you want to look better. You want to feel better. Right. You want to look at it. You want to feel better. You want to, mm-hmm. you want to have something to be grateful, like uh, appreciate it for. Like, wow, look what I did. Like, I'm proud of myself. But there's a lot of problems associated with losing weight because there's a lot of junk out there that people right. try to follow. Mm-hmm. They don't realize it's junk. It's not your fault. It's not your fault you don't realize it. It's okay. There's a lot of misinformation out, out there. There's a lot of right. fake Instagram fitness models who just – you know, get plastic surgery, put some fake butts and boobs in their body, and they're like, oh, man, I'm on Instagram. You know, editing, you guys, you guys know how, uh, you got Snapchat and Instagram, how they have filters. You can, you can literally put any kind of filter on now, right? Like, I can make myself a white guy in a filter. I can make myself a woman in a filter. You should do you that. <laughs> you, don't yeah, think that these, you don't think these Instagram models aren't using the best editors? Like, they, these Instagram models that have hundreds of thousands of followers have editors that take their picture and make them look ideal right like right. they shrink their weight they, they, they make them look the, the beauty standard men and women right they edit that shit you right. know what i'm saying it's just like the snapchat filter so you can change yourself so a lot of these <laughs> a lot of these influencers are selling programs and saying all right you gotta you gotta hop on this kind of diet and this is how i got my small waist but they're just editing their photos so right. we're gonna talk about practical ways on how to you know lose body fat the long-term way not the short fad diet instagram model way but right the real way that's going to provide you with longevity and true happiness because you're going to be able to do this forever and not just for you know three months or six six weeks 30 day challenge type of thing right you want to develop actual skills right and don't get me wrong like challenges are great to do six week challenges eight week challenges they're great Exactly. But the thing you want to do is you want to stick with the things that you learn. Mm-hmm. You don't want to just revert back. And that's right. the problem is staying consistent is the first problem that mm-hmm. people have a trouble with. Like they go, they do a six-week challenge. They go balls to the wall, crazy. Right. 
they get on some crazy bodybuilders diet where they're eating chicken and brown rice and uh, and broccoli at every meal and then they starve themselves by the end of the six weeks and then they're like oh my god i can't do this anymore and then what happens they gain 10 15 pounds back right 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 <laughs> and i think a part of the problem with the challenge is i'm actually i'm doing a 30-day challenge right now we're on day six everyone in the group has been crushing it but a, a problem with a lot of these challenges is that they're not teaching you habit change they're just telling you to eat a certain way right you know what i'm saying they're just saying all right eat chicken and rice broccoli asparagus for whatever so for six weeks eat a thousand right. calories of course you're gonna lose weight doing that but after that you're like okay cool i lost the weight where do i go from here you have no right. other place to go uh, <laughs> you have no other place to go besides where you, what you were doing before because there's no way you <laughs> there's no <laughs> there's no one who's going to be eating chicken rice and broccoli for the rest of their lives that <laughs> no. that is not fun no i could do that for a week I'll do that yep. for a week or two when I'm trying to get super lean. Like when right. I'm already lean, when I already have like a, a kind of a six pack coming through, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll kick it to that next level, drop mm. my carbs down a little bit, eat chicken and broccoli for, for a whole week. And I'll get, yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll drop that little extra percentage I want to drop, but then I'll go back to my normal eating after I snap mm. a few picks, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. that was cool. So we got a, we got little, little Billy boy, little Billy. He's, uh, he's never meal prepped in his entire life, right? He's never kept a food log. This is completely new to him, eating healthier. What's like, what's just a basic tip, basic starting point for Billy Boy just to get the ball rolling? The ball, ball Billy rolling. Boy? Yeah. Uh, number one, Billy Boy, if you've never meal prepped, don't meal prep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you want to lose weight, Billy Boy, uh, don't jump into hardcore crazy stuff. Right, right, right. Taking like number one, set your goal properly. Mm. That's the first step. Is all right, little Billy boy who wants to lose body fat. What is your goal? How much weight do you want to lose? And give yourself a time frame. So number one, you have to goal set. Because if you don't set a goal, you don't have a date to look forward to. Right. And that is is deadly. It's like saying, all right, we're gonna we're gonna get you on the treadmill and we're gonna sprint you as hard as possible, but who knows how long it's gonna be. It might be a minute, it might be ten minutes. So mm -hmm. you know, we'll see what happens. Just go ahead Billy and run, Billy. Boy, yeah, Billy Boy's going hard for thirty seconds and then then guess what? He dies after those thirty <laughs> oh, seconds. Oh, Billy Boy dies. <laughs> but the sprint oh. goes on seven minutes longer and he passes out and hits his head on the treadmill and then breaks his head. You know, that's what happens with people mm. in fitness. They're like, oh, I want to lose weight. But they don't set a goal. They don't set how much weight they want to lose and they get right, burned right, right. doing it. That's actually, that, you know, that's one of the first things you talked about in the Level Up program. And one of the first things I talked about in my 30-day challenge is just proper goal setting. Goal setting is right. it's not just fitness. Goal, you, goal setting is the, the, it's laying the foundation to achieving anything that you want. You've got to set proper goals. And you talked about uh, outcome goals versus behavioral goals. Right. And, you know, Billy Boy has got to set those goals. And right. the goals have to reflect something that he can do every single day. So he's not going to go from uh, eating junk food and never meal prepping in his life to start meal prepping. What's something he could do in between that, right? Uh, an easier step. Maybe what I would suggest is Billy Boy just starts eating fast food a little bit less. He's not going from eating 10 fast food meals a week to zero. He's going 10 fast meals a week to eight. Right. right. And that would be a great start for the right. little boy instead of going, you know, cold turkey right into meal prep. That's, that's a recipe for failure. I don't know 100%. anybody who's ever did that. I did that. I did that on a, when I uh, first went plant-based and that was the worst decision of my life. Like that was like the <laughs> hardest thing to go from eating a complete, eating one way to a completely different way. And I already had, pretty good discipline and consistency with my food. So doing that, I can imagine someone who's never in their life ate clean food, all right, or meal prepped to, to go from that, from eating fast food and junk and doing whatever to a super strict protocol. That's just not sustainable. Right, you're not gonna be consistent and you'll never get to your goal that way. It's right. like, I love seeing people who, who do these six week challenges and you like, you obviously know they're eating junk because they're yeah. 30 pounds overweight. Mm. And then you see them snap a picture with their refrigerator and it's like 19 little, little, little containers with their brown rice and chicken in it. And they're, they're all excited. Like, meal prep. Oh, look, at, look at what I did. I meal prepped for nine hours. And I got uh. all my meals better for the week. And uh. then halfway through the week, you see them like eating junk and they're like, oh, I don't want to eat my meal prep. It looks mm -hmm. gross. It's like, wow, shocking. I didn't know that that would happen. Ha, <laughs> ha, ha. 
Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, listen, you, you're gonna need to learn how to meal prep eventually, but you just gotta take those baby steps. So eating less fast food, maybe meal prepping one meal a day. There one just one one meal a day. I talk about I talked about right. that in the 30 day challenge also. Just cook one meal. You can eat, I don't care if you eat trash for the rest of the day, right? But just get into the habit of cooking at least one 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 meal, right? Learning how to set up a proper plate that is balanced. And then you just doing that one thing a day, right? You're gonna give yourself a little bit more confidence and you're gonna do day two and day three and maybe a couple weeks of that, then a couple weeks of you know meal prepping one one meal a day. And you're also at the same time bringing that fast food a little bit less, a little bit less. There's going to come to a point where you're like, all right, let me see if I can cook two meals a day. All right? All right. And that's the next step for yourself instead of just going from this extreme all the way to the other extreme. All right. It's like we talked about the other week on this podcast, we talked about momentum and building a momentum and having mm -hmm. willpower. And when you go into meal prepping every single meal to perfection, mm -hmm. You can't build up momentum. It's already right. all there. Like you went from a, a sitting on the couch to a full on sprint. Like there's nowhere to go from there. Like you went zero to hundred. So if you take your ex advice and you tap, you go from sitting on the couch to now you're just walking. Mm. Okay, great. Now we can walk. Now we're walking. Now I'm yes. building momentum. Okay, I feel good. I'm walking. I'm starting to I'm starting to loosen up. Now maybe I'll do a light jog for 15 seconds. And I'll do a light jog. Same concept with meal prepping. Start with one meal. Like Josh said, one meal a day. I mean, one meal a week if it needs to be. Mm. And then maybe two meals the next week. And then maybe you start eating one meal out less. Right. It's like you're building momentum. So that six weeks down the road, now you're eating three healthy meals a day. Mm. And now you're going out to eat five times less a week, but it felt easy. Mm -hmm. So that instead of, instead of at the end of the six week, you're like, Oh, I'm so burnt out on eating out or eating clean every day. I haven't been out to eat once. And then you go on one cheat day and it sets off this huge negative control, mm -hmm. like this negative loop pattern. It's like, Oh, I'm going to gorge today. And then you feel like crap the next day and you don't right. work out. And then you gorge again. You feel like crap. You don't work out. You gorge again. And then you're 10 pounds heavier than you were when you started. So now you're fatter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and more unmotivated. So uh -huh, uh -huh. you just screwed yourself. <laughs> you just screwed yourself, little Billy boy. Yeah, Billy. Little Come Billy on. boy. <laughs> now, but I was I was also gonna say it's like if you're eating one way, if you're eating junk and then you start eating clean, your body has like a a chemical response inside your body. It's expecting these foods are making you feel a certain way like your body's expecting it. it's like a drug almost you know it's like 100%. it's like if you're eating if you're eating all that sugar and you're eating all that processed food and you know hey J jack in the box curly fries man when oh, i eat that it makes me so oh, i get such a good feeling inside my body oh. yeah, i feel like trash afterwards but i get mm -hmm. i'm addicted to that kind of stuff when i was when i was eating it right so if you go from that to clean there's there's just no way you're gonna it's gonna be sustainable because your body's literally gonna like shut down right it's gonna be like please give me the junk food like it's gonna be begging you to feed it that trash and it's gonna play your mind's gonna play tricks on you now when you start easing your way into things you're gonna be like when you're eating that one clean, clean meal a day you're gonna be like damn i actually feel pretty good eating this one clean meal a day right you're right. gonna start feeling the contrast of how different foods make you feel great right? eating drunk junk you feel this way and then you're like all right that one clean meal i don't feel as bloated it actually gave me a little bit more energy and those uh, that positive feedback, that positive reinforcement by the foods you're putting into your body is going to give you momentum to be like, now you're like, okay, cool. Next week, let me kick it up just a little bit. Let me kick it up a notch. Right. Exactly. And it's funny people, when they start a diet, mm. everybody starts with the reductionist diet where you cut out everything you can't eat. Mm. Like you cut out all sugars and everything, which is good. I like yeah. that. But here's a problem with reductionist diet is that you start craving those things or cutting out of meat. So I'm, I'm a big proponent of starting off, if you're, if you're in for the long term, start off with adding in good food only. And don't right. worry about cutting out mm. anything mm. bad. So well, anytime somebody new comes in to the gym and I sit down with them, I'm like, okay, so you're adding in exercise to your program. Don't change anything about your diet. Like mm. literally don't cut anything out. 
all you're going to do is add in one healthy meal and you can still eat all the stuff you normally eat, chips, whatever you're eating, you're going out to eat, cool, do it. Right. But add in that one healthy meal, whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, it doesn't matter, add it in. And then that's going to be the one thing you add in. And then the next mm -hmm. week, we're going to add in one more meal. And then, like you said, people start to realize, wow, I'm actually feeling good. When I right. wake up in the morning and I have a breakfast, maybe I'll keep doing that more frequently mm -hmm. instead of having a Pop-Tart, which is delicious, but makes right. me feel like crap and gives me right. a sugar high. And then I crash, right? So that I, I'm a big proponent of addition, adding good foods in instead of cutting them out initially. And then yeah. we can, as you progress, like you're six weeks into it, okay, let's mm. talk about cutting a little more things out so that we can facilitate the fat loss over these next six weeks. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's, that's great advice. And also talking about the junk food, you could start eliminating uh, just, I, I would say, okay, for example, you go to, you, you're going to get some ice cream, right, from Vons. I, I talked about this in my 30-day challenge. You're going to go get some ice cream from Vons, right, and you're going to get that little pint of Ben & Jerry's. That Ben & Jerry's pint is like, like 1,000 calories. How do I eat that? That's good. I get the mint chocolate chip, Ben & Jerry's. That's my favorite. Oh, so All right. But also, there's another, there's another, there's like a Halo Top ice cream that is also the same size, but it's only 400 calories, right? So sometimes you can exchange, you can still eat, the, you're, if you're still eating, you're, you still want to get the junk in <laughs> just for, to say you take the high calorie version and you find a, a alternative that's lower in calories. And that's a way to also get yourself off of it. If, if that makes sense, because no, you know, totally. there's a bunch of added sugars and a bunch of added stuff that is literally getting you addicted to that Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And then just choosing a healthier alternative. It's still ice cream, right? Maybe it doesn't taste exactly the same, but it's half the calories. Right? right, and there's always a healthier alternative for everything that you like. You know, you like cookies. There is a cookie that's lower. If you like Oreos, there's an Oreo that's lower in calories. If you like chocolate covered this, there's a lower calorie version. So that's right. also a good tip. Just find lower calorie ver versions of the foods that you like. Right, super easy suggestion right there. Like you're like be grateful that you live in California, where everybody's so obsessed with how they look and they feel. So there's millions of healthier options to pick so right. the excuse of oh i just had a craving and there was nothing else is bs hmm. so that excuse is no longer valid maybe 20 years ago when there was no such thing as low calorie low fat snack foods when you right. had to figure it out on your own okay maybe i was a little bit harder now it's super easy to go find a halo top ice cream that's got 200 calories versus 800 per serving Right. And that's a big one for people. All right, switch out. Like my my go to for sweets are the Italian ice. It's like the Italian shaved ice. Way less oh. it's a hundred calories for a little cup, mm. about this much. But a cup of ice cream would be like three hundred, four hundred calories. Right. And it takes me a while to eat that Italian ice because it's like I gotta I gotta like grind at the ice and then like you only get a little bit at a time. Mm. So twenty minutes into eat, like fifteen minutes into eating, I'm like, Oh, I feel good now. I'm good. I only had 100 calories too instead of 800. Right. So right. And just, finding those low calorie, easy switches is, is key. Right. And just and just from that tip right there, you'll you're you're lowering your overall caloric intake. So if you take all the junk you're eating and then just start picking healthier alternatives, you're gonna like. <laughs> I mean, some of my clients lose weight just from doing that. You know, totally. Just, those, just, oh, just, 100%. just from, yeah. you, They're not even. They haven't even started meal prepping yet or anything like that. No. Or not counting even calories. Even. Right. They're just replacing one junk food with an, a lesser junk food. Wow. It's like, wow, I'm still eating junk food, but I'm losing weight now. It's miraculous. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, when you start getting into meal prepping, though, and food, pre you know, all that kind of stuff, right? You're, you're, you've, you're past the point where, you know, your sticking point isn't, oh, man, I have to eat the junk food. Now you're getting into the, you're, you're starting to meal prep now. I think a lot of people have the issue where, you know, they say that their food is, is boring. It doesn't taste good, right? They're eating the same things every day. Like what, what would be a tip you would give to someone to just spice up their plate a little bit, you know, make things more, more enjoyable for them. Oh, so such an easy thing to do. Like if you're cooking, there are so many spices that oh, you can yeah. throw on there. There are so many calorie free dressings. Mm -hmm. You can throw in there's, there's hundreds. You, you, mm. you can eat a different flavor every day for probably 90 days. <laughs> like, you got a, you got a couple of favorite, you got a couple of favorite sauces. 
Yeah, like zero calories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, like people are like, oh, I'm sick of my chicken. Okay, put zero calorie barbecue sauce and douse it in it, and then yeah. man and let make some tacos. Put some salsa on it. Salsa, ten calories per like nine tablespoons. Wow, make make a make a tortilla wrap. Make a lettuce wrap. Put like zero calorie Caesar dressing on your salad and put a bunch of chicken on there. Like, right, dude, there's there just so many ways. There's endless way. Like, let's just say, you know, ch chick chicken breast chicken is a staple in most people's meal prepping, right? right? You could right. have teriyaki chicken. You could have a uh, fajita chicken. You can have a a chicken salad. Boom. You can have barbecue chicken. Boom. You can have like some uh, salt and pepper style chicken. Boom. Right? That's that, five that, right there. That's five options right there. Right? <laughs> right you, can, there. You, you can do the same thing with every single, <laughs> every meal, you can spice it up like that. For example, right. for, me, for me personally, I've got 10 go-to meals that I know, all right, and any given day I can eat those. Like I've, I've, been in, I've been doing this long enough where I have 10 meals that I can go to. I may use about five of them in the week, four or five give or take, maybe I'll get some food out, you know, once or twice a week or something like that, right? D depends on the week. And I don't get bored of those foods because if, if I do get bored of those foods, I've got another five foods that I can choose from that I know that I like, right? So part of it is just finding things that you like, playing around with different recipes, sauces, spices, right? There's literally thousands, there's a hundreds and th hundreds of thousands of recipes out there right that you can just that are easy to easy to easy to make right right and then you go to trader joe's you go to sprouts they've got hundreds uh, di hundreds of sauces that you can go that you can use so you can, like you said you can use a different sauce every single day and that's gonna get that's gonna make your food way better right, right. zero calorie sauce mm -hmm. like like you can't get any better than that <laughs> you know and even if you do the sauce with calories guess what it's only like 50 calories extra. Wow. Right. 50 calories instead of 900 calories extra going and getting a burger on your own. Go make your own burger, douse right. it with cheese and whatever you want, and you cut the calories in half. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. And, and it's like when you start eating uh, cleaner foods, whole foods, it's going to fill you up too. So right. You're going to be way more full if you, I, when you go to McDonald's or you go get a burger. You guys know this. You you eat the burger and maybe you're full for like 20, 30 minutes and then you're hungry again. Yep. Right? Those foods aren't filling you. They're not filling you up. Yeah, they're giving <laughs> they're making you feel good temporarily, but you know, they just don't have enough nutrients in them to 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 make you full. Right? right. These whole foods were designed to make you full, right? They right. want to satisfy you, right? Right. Because being being overweight is not <laughs> beneficial for for you as a human to live a, 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 a full life, right? You being, that's why whole foods are so low in calories and they're, and they're nutritious, right? Because you, you're supposed to be lighter weight. You're supposed to be able to do things and move around and run and all that kind of stuff, right? So when right. you start incorporating more of these whole foods, right, you're going to be fuller. And then when you start using these sauces and all that kind of stuff, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be so, it's going to be so easy for you to enjoy the food is what I'm trying to say. Right. right? You're not going to crave that junk food. Right. And let's break it down. Let's, let's talk about, uh, McDonald's real quick. I had McDonald's the other day for the first time in years. I had 20 chicken nuggets and a Big Mac. 20 chicken nuggets and a Big Mac. Mm. Now let's talk about being like physically full versus yeah. chemically full. So okay. physically full means that my stomach is physically full of food. So I'm like, oh, I feel like I ate a ton. I just had 20 chicken nuggets and I had a burger. So I'm like, oh, I'm so full right now. I was like up to here. I could feel it. And then 20, 30, 40 minutes later, I'm like, oh, I could eat again. Mm. That's the difference between like structurally, physically full in your stomach. And then there's chemically full. So chemically full, meaning you release the chemicals in your brain that signal that you're full. So when I'm eating junk food, that's got no good nutrients in it, no real protein sources, like meat from McDonald's is fake meat. Like there's no real meat in that. There's no fiber in it. There's no mm. healthy fats. So I'm eating all this junk food with no with no chemicals and no nutrients that are going to make me signal to my brain that I'm full. However, if I made my own chicken nuggets at home mm. with real meat, and if I made my own burger at home with real meat, and I had some real French fries with real food with real olive oil or real fat on it, then right. that'll signal to my body 
that I'm eating real food and the mm. chemicals in my brain will be like, okay, he's eating real food. Mm. Now I'm not just structurally and, and physically full. Now I'm chemically full. Now I'm releasing hormones in my brain that are saying, okay, I'm full. We'll stay this way for a few hours now. Right. So that's a big difference. Right, right, right. And then the, and the fast food industries know that too. Right? They, know that you, they know that you're going to be addicted to their food and it's not going to fill you up. Right. <laughs> you, know, you know how cheap they're making – you know how cheap it is for them to make their burgers, right? That's probably just a piece of shit that they found and they put it inside a bun. <laughs> they put it inside a bun. I think they grilled a dead rat outside and they put it in the burger. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. So you know, just easing your way into cleaner eating is is always gonna be it's gonna it's gonna be superior than just diving right into it, right? So we talked right. about we talked about eating fast food a little bit less. Picker, picking uh, different snack foods that you like, but the lower calorie versions. We talked about starting eating just one clean meal a day and going from there, right? Yeah. So you're doing all these things. You're at your, if you're meal prepping, you're starting to spice up your food using different sauces, using different recipes to make it more fun for yourself and enjoyable. You know, those are the tips, but you know, I know I have clients that tell me that, you know, maybe the people around them aren't so supportive of the way that the, the way that they're eating, you know, maybe you're, you're younger and you're living with your parents and your parents do all the grocery shopping or, uh, you know, you just, you just live with other people who are just a little bit, they're like, all right, why are you eating this way? You know, right. I want you to eat this way. Hey, John, come get, come, let's go get Chick-fil-A. Let's go get McDonald's. Oh, oh no, I got to say, yeah, yeah it, you're like, oh no, I'm, I'm eating a diet. Come on, John. It's just one, it's just one time out. So that's just one meal, right? Oh, you, you could skip the gym today. Let's just go to happy hour real quick. Right. I love hearing that one. Right, exactly. So what, what, what's a couple of tips you would give people in that situation where maybe they just have people around them that aren't so supportive of their goals? Would I, would, I would be sure to vocalize my goals to them and mm. be sure to tell them how important it is to me. All right. Because that's all. Number one, here's the number one most important thing with friends and family is oftentimes people don't value themselves enough to listen and follow through with what they want. They want what their mom wants. They're going to school because their mom wants them to be a doctor. They're going to happy hour because their friends are really the only value they have in themselves. Mm. And so you got to be you, you got to be really honed in on you in order to get past this one. And that's, right. this is a challenging one because a lot of friends and family don't understand. I mean, I can't tell you, but let me tell you about one of our clients. She comes in, she shredded, she's got a six pack. Mm. She comes in at 6 a.m. to the gym and one of her best friends is like always trying to get her out. And mm. She's like, it's, it sucks because my friends don't understand that I, I want to, I'm here for me. And mm. so she just has to stick around with herself essentially. Mm. Um, and so, so vocalizing and being honest with who you are and what you want in life and what's going to bring you happiness is so important. And don't, don't put all your value in what your friends and family say, be a little right. more assertive with yourself. Like right, right, when right. you're on a fat loss journey, it's tough because usually we're a little bit less confident and a little bit unhappy with ourselves, mm. but you have to learn to develop that self-confidence and right. self-love. Otherwise right. your family and friends will take you away. Yeah. You got to be self-confident. You got to practice that self-love and you also have to be selfish. hundred percent. You got to selfish. Be selfish. Don't let anyone take, <laughs> literally don't let anyone take you off your goal. Right. Right. And I, I know for, from, from my, from my own experience, I remember when I was younger, I would have all these goals and I would tell people about them. And let's just say I, I told a friend about a goal, but I just didn't follow through with it. Like I told him I wanted to do this. And then six months later passed and I didn't do what I said I was going to do. You know, you, you want to make sure that you're at you, that you're serious about it, not only vocalizing that you're serious, but you're you're backing it up with actual action. When the people around you see like, oh, damn, Josh is actually Josh is serious about this. That also helps them be a little bit more supportive versus if they keep seeing you fall off. They've seen you try to do die before and you fell off. They've seen you try this new thing and you fell off. Right. But if you really are serious about it, you're like, no, like, listen, this is serious to me. And if you care about me then you'll respect that i don't want to go out tonight or i don't want to eat this food with you right? right or maybe even even like say hey like maybe you should do this with me you know it'd be great for, that's it'd a be great, great for, option it'd, it'd be great for the both of us like i'm doing these home workouts you should hop in with you should hop into one of these home workouts with me i think it would be fun 
right? Oh, you should, uh, let's cook a meal together tonight. Uh, let's have like Thursday night, whatever night, you know, let's eat a clean meal and we can just hang out and talk and invite them into your world and show them like, hey, like I, I, this is positive for me, but I also want you to be a part of it too because you're someone that I care about. Like you're someone that's close to me. So that's a good tip too. Yeah, and you know what? I, the thing with that too is like, it's, it's tough when, when you have family that are younger, like kids you have to take care of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like true. that's another thing because now we're talking about, okay, are you feeding your kids the right food? Are you feeding them junk food? Mm. Now you have to really ask yourself, am I really giving my kids a benefit of feeding them goldfish every day and feeding them M&Ms because I secretly like them too? Right. Like, are you really keeping it around for your kids or is it for you? Like, you got to ask yourself, like, of course your kids are going to whine and complain if you've been feeding them M&Ms because now they're addicted too. Mm -hmm. But you're an adult. You have to be an adult. And being an adult to a child means you have to discipline them properly. Otherwise, right. they're going to grow up being whiny little B-I-T-C-H-E-S's and they're going to run the show. I, I, I remember I sat down with this lady. She was from Brazil and her husband. She was probably 300 pounds, five foot three very overweight woman and I was sitting down yeah. with her and she had her kids with her mm. right there. And they were ho hooping and hollering the whole time. And she could not get them to shut up. Mm. And I'm like, Oh, this girl's not going to be a good fit for this gym. I can already tell right. she's just, and she's like, I'll ask her about her diet. And I was like, so tell me a little bit about your diet. She's like, Oh, well we go out to fast food and almost every meal mm. Her kids, by the way, were very overweight, very yeah. overweight. Like, mm. They were probably like four or five and they had like chunk rolls on their arms still. And I'm like, whoa, yeah. these kids are going to have diabetes guaranteed by age 11. And I remember asking her, she's like, oh, well, my kids want to eat it. And she's like, otherwise they're just going to yell and scream. And I'm like, that's your job as a parent to nip that in the butt. Otherwise, that's what they're going to get when they grow up and they're mm -hmm. not going to be performing and productive adults in this world. They're going to have diabetes and they're going to be rampant with all these issues. Like, you have to nip that in the butt at some point. Yeah. So if you're feeding your kids junk, you got to have an honest conversation with yourself and be like, am I a man or woman enough to be an adult and coach this person, this little human being on how to be a good human being, how to be healthy and productive? Or am I going to get away with them being a little SHIT and run the show because they run right. the show? Right, like, right, right. you got to ask yourself these honest questions and they're hard to answer sometimes. Mm -hmm. you know? so, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that girl, little, by the way, that girl, by the way, never joined my gym. <laughs> uh, I, I was just, I, I wasn't, she wasn't a good fit for the gym. Yeah, and I could, I could, see, I could, I could understand you got little, your little old Billy boy, mommy, I want ice cream. And then you tell no, and, and then they start crying. They start crying. <laughs> and then you say, all right, fuck it. I'll give you the ice cream just so you can get them to stop crying. But you know, it's not going to benefit them in the future, but you just want them to stop crying. Right. Right. But if you just held your ground a little bit more and let them know that, hey, I'm your, I'm the boss here in this situation, you know, little Billy boy is going to stop crying and you can give him some carrots or something else healthier, but check it out. I think a good tip too, is to start incorporating those days with your family where you're eating clean, like Monday taco, ta taco Tuesday night, and we're going to eat clean tacos. Wednesday's a different right. kind of night, like kind of have these themes where you're eating the clean food, but you're making it fun. Right? right, where the family is incorporated, your your kids right. are looking forward to like the healthier foods. They don't, yeah. I mean, they don't know that. Don't it's tell healthy. them. Yeah, you don't tell. Right. You're not gonna say don't tell this them is them. healthy food, Billy. Yeah. Uh, Put that zero calorie stuff on it. Yeah. No difference. Exactly, teriyaki. Your kids will go crazy. Teriyaki night. Uh, you yeah, know that's zero gonna, calorie teriyaki. Right <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna love that stuff, but it does. It doesn't matter what. Uh, level like what level you're at whether you're uh just starting to clean up your clean up your act if you've been doing it for a long time you're, you're gonna have people who are gonna have something to say about the thing the decisions you're making the things that you're doing i've been working out for 12 years been doing this for a long time and my family is still not 100 percent supportive of what i'm doing like oh jo joshua you, you work out a little bit too much oh are you sure you don't want to come and eat this food it's it's, it's going to be happening for a long time, but you just, it's going to be happening forever, but you just find ways to like, you know, kind of edit off the things that you let affect you, right? Like I've heard this my whole entire life. It doesn't affect me anymore when people try to, you know, get me to do certain things that I know it goes opposite against my goals. And then I also have a lot of my family, they've seen me do it for so long that 
of course they're supportive. They care about me. You know, of course they're supportive, but they also have their own interests in mind. You know, they want me to come out and, and go to go get dinner here. And I know I right. don't eat that, or they want me to come for a drink here because they want to hang out with me. And that's the stuff that they're into. You know what I'm saying? Right. I remember I was in Chicago visiting my family once. So all my, all my relatives live in Chicago and my mom's got six brothers. So they're all very brotherly, you know, very yeah. masculine brothers. So I go over there and uh, they're all eating. Like my, my, my uncle brought back like 50 chicken, uh, Nick, Nick, burgers or whatever they are. I don't even know which oh. Nick burger it was but he freezes them and heats them up for later use <laughs> so he's eating uh, that and I'm like I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna eat that and you're like oh you're you're one of those California FAGs aren't you where where uh, he, you don't you don't eat any of that go go, go give him a piece of lettuce so they're yeah, talking yeah. shit and I'm like whatever I'm like I look good I'm like mm. you're fat <laughs> like exactly. I feel good about myself like my energy is on point like, I feel amazing. Like, just because you're going to talk shit, like, doesn't mean that I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, maybe you're right. It's like, so there was always going to be haters. You just got to let that stuff roll off your back. And exactly. like, oh, they're, they're feeling insecure because he's got a big old belly, and I don't. Right. Cool. Right. Oh, yes. Right. <laughs> and it gives you even more confidence in yourself when you can break past people. If people can't sway you to do what – if people are telling you to get off your diet and you break – of course, oh man, that's gonna destroy your confidence in the future. Oh. But if you if you say no and you're firm on what you say, you're gonna be like, yeah, I like I love myself. I, I'm serious about my goals, All right? It's gonna give you even more confidence because you overcame that that objection. Yep, and it becomes easier and easier every exactly. time you overcome it. I'm like, nope, exactly. nope, and nope, then, nope. Hey, you know what? You know what happens too in a lot of the cases? Those same people that maybe gave you shit for doing what you're doing. You know, years down the line, they'll be the ones asking for advice. How did yep. you lose so? How did you lose so much weight? Oh, what do you do for workouts? Oh, I, I'm trying this diet. What do you think about that? And they're gonna be, you know, the ones that are asking you questions about how you did it. Yep, good point. Very good point. So there's always gonna be the friends and family. They're always the most negative because yep. a lot of people are insecure about themselves. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, it doesn't vibe right with them when you tell them you're trying to self-improve because most people don't self-improve. Yeah. So they're going to be, they're going to try to get you down on their level and drag you down. It's like, the, it's like a bucket of crabs. You got a bucket of crabs, right? This is yeah. what my mentor Bedros would say all the time. This is his favorite one. Mm. You got a bucket of crabs. Like one, one crab is trying to get out of the bucket and it's getting to the top. It, it grabs the top of the rim you'll see the other crabs grab that crab and pull it back down. If you mm. see a bucket, that this is what happens. It's crazy. So you got these crabs in your life and you're that crab trying to get out. Don't let these people drag you down because your closest friends and family are going to do it. You got to be that crab, baby. Be that crab. <laughs> so yeah, I'm talking about. So let's, uh, let's, let's <laughs> recap. Let's recap what we <laughs> talked about in this podcast. All right, we talked about how to, you know, get started with on your body fat loss journey, getting started to eating cleaner, right? Eliminating the fast food, incorporating eating clean eating, incorporating uh, eating those foods that you love, just healthier versions of them, healthier versions of your snack foods. We talked about, you know, getting over the different objections you may face, like unsupportive people that are close to you, whether it's family members, whether, whether it's friends. You know, and then we talked about what was the last thing we talked about? Goal setting, man. Goal, goal setting. You know, you gotta set that goal. Gotta set that goal. You know, because if you don't have a goal in the first place, you're never gonna get to where you want to go ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like going to college, and you're like year three in and you still don't have a degree you want to shoot for. You're just taking uh, all these general ed classes still. Yeah. You don't have an end goal. You're not like, oh, I kind of take these classes and these classes every year to get to my end, uh, end degree. No, you're like, oh, let's do math. Let's do history. Let's do social uh, science. Uh, uh, let's do it all. Yeah. No, and, you got to have a goal, man. Yeah, when you, when you don't have goals, you're, you're high, there's so much information out there, and if you don't have a specific goal, then you're highly impressionable, meaning you're doing one thing, and you're kind of doing it halfway or whatever. And then someone tells you, no, you need to be doing this. And then you just instantly turn and, and start doing that. And now you're doing this thing. And then they tell you something else and you're doing this thing. Right. So 
when you get, when you have firm goals, you can make a plan of action and then you stick to the plan, right? You right. stick to the plan and then that's Staying how you can consistent. Yeah. Staying consistent. Set a goal, stay consistent. Work on adding in small meals, small healthy meals. Ignore right. your annoying friends and family who are trying to dissuade you. And then turn turn that healthy food into delicious food with with sauces and flavoring. Man, that's you gotta you gotta sauce do. it up. That's it. You got to sauce it up. Sauce it up. So losing weight, it's a process. Mm. It's not a six-week challenge. Right. It's a six-month commitment minimum. Mm. And you're going to be moving and meandering through this process, and there's going to be ups and downs, man. Like, you're going to go through highs and lows, and you're going to have to get through those obstacles. And that's your test. That's your test to get fit. Everybody who's lean has gone through every test in the book. Right. They've gone through learning how to cook. They've gone through learning how to eliminate junk food. They've gone mm -hmm. to learning how to track their calories. They've gone to learning how to set goals, learning how to ignore family members. Exactly. You know, these are all skills. Right, right. You know? Mm -hmm. And then when you develop so, these skills by working on yourself, right, those skills translate to literally everything. Everything. You nailed it. Everything. You can apply those, that skill to everything. Because no matter what you do, whether it's losing weight, finding a new job, you know, and telling your kids what to do, you're always going to have pushback. Always. So, got to learn how to get through that pushback. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome. So, uh, thank you guys for joining us. You know, you learned a little bit about weight loss and what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. so take what you learned today take one thing you learned today and apply it just one thing don't take all the things that we talked about right josh we talked about setting small goals so take one thing you learned today and think about that Let that manifest you know maybe it's setting goals maybe the one thing you've been doing wrong is setting a goal all right so six mm -hmm. weeks down the road i'm gonna lose 10 pounds how much do we break that down you know, i want to add in one meal one healthy meal this week okay cool mm -hmm. break that down mm -hmm. i want to have one healthy food that I'm going to cook for my kids this week. Okay, great. That's going to be your one thing you do. Right, right. When you start knocking down those individual goals you set for yourself, you set for yourself like we talked about, you get that momentum. You yep. get that confidence. Get that momentum and confidence, baby. All right, that's Jake Part Talk for today. Joshy boy, thank you for your wise input as always. Hey, appreciate you guys. Thank you for listening. Yeah, guys. See you next week. Peace.